So we will see now a description of the main component of uh, uh, a pressurized water reactor. This is <coughs> the type of reactor which is the most common worldwide uh, and uh, this is the reason why I choose to uh, focus on uh, this one. You have here a, a sketch of a, a pressurized water reactor. Here is a vessel with inside the core of the reactor, the steam generator where the coolant of the primary system exchange is heat with the secondary system. The secondary system is water entering the steam generator which is transform in steam exchanging the, the heat from the primary system and the steam goes to the turbine uh, which generates the, the generator <coughs> the steam is then condensed in the condenser which is cooled by the <coughs> an open circuit either a cooling tower or the river water we will see in more detail the different element of uh, a nuclear reactor, especially in the coming small video, you will have a look on the main cooling uh, circuits. The heat released by the fuel in the reactor vessel is removed by cooling loops. Each loop includes a steam generator and a pump. The water leaves the reactor vessel through a large pipe called the hot leg and enters the steam generator. Here it is cooled by the secondary water which is vaporized then is sucked into the intermediate leg by the main coolant pump and discharged into the reactor vessel through the cold leg. Depending on the power rating of the reactor, the reactor coolant system consists of three loops as is the case in Electro 1 or four loops as is the case in Electro 2. To prevent the primary water from boiling although it is at a temperature of 320 degrees centigrade on leaving the reactor vessel a pressurizer is provided which maintains a high pressure in the system. The bottom of the pressurizer is connected to one of the loops by a pipe which after a number of expansion bends joins the hot leg of the loop. This constitutes the pressurizer expansion line. These are the main components of the reactor coolant system. This is an uh, overview of a 1300 megawatt uh, pressurized water reactor. You find here in the middle the, the containment and the primary system the reactor vessel here, you can see the steam generator and um, beside this is the fuel building where the fresh fuel is inserted in the pool and before being loading, loaded in the reactor vessel and uh, when the fuel is used, we call that a spent fuel, it is driven by back uh, in, the, uh, in uh, the pool here to be cooled uh, up to the time that uh, it could be transported outside of the plant. Here is a turbine building where you can see here the main turbine and the generator at the end. Of course there is a lot of auxiliary facility around there, some such as some tanks here to store liquid waste or elements to make up the uh, water inside the primary or the secondary system. <coughs> Let's discuss uh, now about the, the fuel itself. The basic element is a fuel assembly which is shown here. It's a for, for this type of reactor, a 17 by 17 assembly of fuel rods. You can see here a vertical view of uh, the fuel assembly and with all 
the uh, small rods. Inside <coughs> the rods you have some pellets and the fuel itself is in form of pellets which are peel up inside these, uh, these uh, fuel rods. To maintain the, the rods you have at various elevations some grids that maintain the, the, uh, the fuel rods. Uh, on some position inside the fuel assembly there is no fuel but there are some holes for the insertion of control rods that will <coughs> allow to control the, uh, the level of power of uh, the reactor. In uh, a reactor core typical there is something like 200 such fuel assembly and the lens uh, from the top to from the top to the bottom is about 4.2 meters. Of course, <coughs> uh, uh, at the two uh, extremities of uh, the fuel assembly, there are elements to allow the transport uh, of the uh, the fuel assembly uh, when we are loading or uh, defueling the assembly from from the core. You will see now a, a small video uh, giving more detail about the fuel. The enriched uranium in which the energy is produced is contained in long thin tubes some 4 meters in length and less than 1 centimeter in diameter. These are the fuel rods. Each rod contains a stack of cylindrical pellets made of uranium dioxide. The pellets are around 8 millimeters in diameter and 13.5 millimeters high. There are around 300 in each rod. The metal tube forming the outer shell of the rod, referred to as the cladding, is made of an alloy of zirconium. End caps are welded to the ends of the rods. At the top, there is an empty space, referred to as a plenum, that contains a spring to receive the gases released by the fuel while it is in the reactor. These rods are combined in sets to form fuel assemblies. The top of the fuel assembly, or upper nozzle, is designed to facilitate handling. The bottom of the fuel assembly, or the lower nozzle, ensures accurate positioning on the support plate in the reactor vessel. The fuel assembly is rigidified by 25 guide tubes, which link the two end fittings. Grids attached to the guide tubes receive the fuel rods of which there are 264 in each fuel assembly. These grids are in the form of a square, each side being approximately 20 centimeters long and having 17 rod positions. They maintain the rods at a regular spacing and prevent them from vibrating while facilitating water flow. A range of devices can be inserted into the guide tubes notably the control rods that are inserted into designated fuel assemblies which play an important role in controlling the chain reaction. So this is a view of uh, uh, the reactor vessel which is the heaviest uh, component of a nuclear reactor. This vessel is in carbon steel uh, with uh, a layer of uh, stainless steel inside uh, 25 This is the, the bottom of the vessel and the top with some penetration for the control rods. The uh, water enter on the side, top side of uh, the vessel and exit through the other. You have here a more detailed view. So the water entering uh, this penetration first goes down to the bottom of the reactor vessel, then enters the core and goes up through the uh, fuel assembly to cool it and gets out here and from this penetration to uh, the what we call the hot tank. The second big component of 
nuclear reactor is a steam generator. This, uh, in, in this component, the hot water uh, at uh, 140 bars uh, comes out of the vessel and enter what we call here the hot box of the steam generator. Uh, above these very thick plates, you have uh, hundreds of U tubes, and the water, hot water entering the uh, uh, hot box, uh, goes up inside the tubes and then getting down and exits through this uh, cold box. And the secondary water, here we call, what we call the feed water, enter the steam generator at the top, goes down between these two shells uh, up to the, uh, the tube plates and then goes up cooling, exchanging uh, the, the heat from the, the inside of the U-tube and then it, it is uh, transforming in steam uh, which is separating steam from the uh, droplets in this part. Then uh, there are some dryers here and the steam goes out of the steam generator through this hole here going to the turbine. You will have in the next video uh, more details about uh, this uh, steam generator. In each of the reactor coolant system loops there is a steam generator. This constitutes a means of exchanging heat between the primary and the secondary systems. The primary coolant from the reactor vessel enters at more than 320 degrees, circulates through a bundle of U-tubes where it gives up its heat as it is cooled by some 40 degrees, then leaves towards the pump. Heat is exchanged via these hot tubes. The secondary side water enters via the top of the steam generator, is channeled down to the bottom along the periphery, then rises up the centre between the tubes in contact with which it is vaporised. The steam thus produced leaves from the top of the steam generator and, apart from being used to generate power, plays an important safety role by removing the heat produced in the core of the reactor. A third uh, important uh, component of a nuclear reactor, at least for the pressurizer water reactor, is a pressurizer. Because the uh, water uh, should remain in a liquid form in the system, and uh, even though the, the pressure is uh, around 140 bars, so the pressurizer serves at maintaining this pressure and uh, sort of regulating the, uh, the, the pressure inside the, the system. Uh, for this purpose, you have at the bottom some heaters, electric heaters, and if they are on, of course, the, the temperature will increase in the pressurizer and so the uh, pressure in the system. Um, on the other hand, you have at, at the top a spray nozzle where uh, cold water could be injected, condensing the steam which is on the top of the pressurizer and so reducing the, the pressure of the system. Uh, another important element of the pressurizer is a safety relief valve, which is here at the top, which is set at a certain set points in order to uh, avoid overpressurization of the system. If the pressure increase too much, the safety valve will open and the steam will be discharged in a, a tank uh, uh, around there. So this um, safety relief valve uh, played an important role in the accident at Three Mile Island that we will uh, describe uh, later. So this is <coughs> a, a sort of uh, summary of what we have seen inside the, the reactor building. You can see here the main component, again the, the vessel here, the uh, four steam generator, uh, the pressurizer 
and the main coolant pump you have then here. Uh, we will discuss perhaps a little bit later about these tanks which are the accumulators which serve an important safety role in case there is uh, uh, a, a break in, in the system. So this concludes this uh, sub-part. Uh, we have seen the main uh, component of uh, a nuclear reactor and we will see now uh, in the next uh, mm. uh, sub-parts and, and parts uh, how we designed and, and how the uh, safety is analyzed first at the <coughs> design step and then of course at the end during, during operation. <coughs>